All right, if you thought that last cut was sketchy, just wait till you get a load of this jig right here. What you see here is what's left of the walnut that I had milled a few years ago on my bandsaw. So what I decided to do is just take what was remaining and try to build something with it. And you know, the the part the pieces aren't that long. I don't think I have anything longer than maybe three, three and a half feet. But uh, my youngest daughter has been begging me for a desk. And so I figured this would be a great use of this wood. Um, I'll be able to work around some of the flaws, some of the knots and inclusions and things and still hopefully make her a pretty awesome desk. These pieces here I'm going to glue up to make leg blanks. This stack of wood right here I'm going to piece together to hopefully get a full desktop out of it. And then these pieces will serve as the sides, back, and the drawer fronts. I should have just enough wood to get the job done as long as I don't make any mistakes, so I'm going to cross my fingers and hope for the best. Let's start with the desktop. The idea here is to get the largest possible desktop out of the available remaining walnut that I have in my shop. Here's everything all laid out. I plan on using splines to butt join the shorter pieces together. I'm shooting for an 18 inch by 40 inch desktop. But since I designed this desk, I can adjust the plan if I come up short. This is the reason I always make the top first. I can always modify my design and make it fit the top. Sometimes it's harder to do it the other way around when you are working with a limited amount of wood. I prepare the wood for the top by first jointing one face and one edge of each board. This gives me one square corner I can reference the rest of my cuts off of. Referencing the freshly jointed edge, I can now clean up the other edge of each board on the table saw. Now I am laying out the boards to see what arrangement gets me close to the dimensions I am looking for. I pair up the boards into rows and trim them on the table saw until they are equal widths. I also square up the ends of each board to prepare them for the spline that I will be adding later. At this point, I want all my boards to be the same thickness. So I run them through the planer until they are just a hair thicker than three quarters of an inch. Here is the setup for cutting the grooves that will accept the splines. I use a feather board to hold the piece tight to the fence. Then I back up the cut with a square piece of wood to stabilize the cut and to keep the board perpendicular to the saw. I'm a big fan of these mag switch feather boards because you can easily lock them down in just about any position as long as it's on a magnetic surface. I cut the spline groove in two passes, rotating the board 180 degrees to ensure a perfectly centered groove. I'm cutting my spline stock out of the same walnut used to build the desk. I use the planer to get the spline stock to the exact thickness I need testing on one of the grooves along the way. I use my crosscut sled with a stop block to cut the individual splines. I create the butt joint by gluing the splines and clamping the two pieces together flat on the surface of my assembly table. A little wax paper keeps the piece from sticking to the tabletop. The lengthened boards all turned out well. Any slight bowing or cupping can be corrected during the desktop glue up. The edges of each board are cleaned up once again at the jointer just to take care of any additional glue squeeze out or unevenness at the butt joint. Now some time is spent to arrange the boards to make sure none of the butt joints are too close to each other and the best faces of each board are all on the same side. Once I'm happy with the layout, I mark a large V on the surface to keep track of the orientation during glue-up. As usual, the glue-up is a little chaotic. 
It helps to have your panel clamps already open and ready to accept the panel. Clamping calls are used to help keep the panel flat as the glue dries. Once the glue has dried for a couple of hours, the clamps are removed and the excess glue is scraped off with an old chisel. Now it is time to deal with these knot holes. I plan on using epoxy to fill the holes, but first I use CA glue on the underside of the knot holes to create a sort of plug that will keep the epoxy from running out when I pour it in on top. I plan on using epoxy mixed with graphite to fill all these holes as well as some areas where the butt joints didn't seat perfectly together. I use the drum sander to smooth down the epoxy and to get the desktop to its final flatness. Since my drum sander is only 18 inches wide and my workpiece is slightly wider than 18 inches, I have to run it through two times for each pass. Now the top is perfectly flat and ready to be trimmed to final dimensions. Since the top is too big for my crosscut sled, I decided to break out the track saw for this operation. First, I mark where I want the saw to cut, then I line the track up to the mark and cut my ends perfectly square. This Grizzly track saw is super affordable and does just as good a job as the other brands that are out there. I do have a hole that will show up on the finished piece if I don't do something about it. I use a piece of spline material and shape it on my disc sander until it makes a tight fit into the hole. Now I just glue it in and wait for it to dry. Once dried, I can now trim the desktop to final width using my table saw. Taking a cue from the mid-century modern inspiration for this desk, I'm going to bevel the underside of the desktop perimeter at 15 degrees. I normally do this with thicker tabletops so they can look elegant but still have a beefy construction, but I find myself using this treatment in most of my projects that have a top. I'm just a fan of the look. I really could use a vertical panel jig, but I don't have one, so I will use my MagSwitch feather board to help hold the panel tight to the fence as I push the piece through the table saw. The smoother you are able to push the piece through the saw, the fewer burn marks you will have to sand out later. I kept catching the workpiece on the back edge of the blade where the throat plate meets the saw top. It looks like I need to spend a little more time leveling my throat plate so it doesn't happen anymore. I won't bore you too much with the sanding process. I used pencil to be sure I was sanding evenly, working through the grits, blowing off the surface between each grit with compressed air to reduce the possibility of swirling. I sanded it up to 320 on the surface and 400 on the end grain. After sanding was complete, I cleaned off the desktop with some turpentine and set it aside for finishing. Now it's time to move on to the legs for this desk. I prepared the wood for the legs off camera and now it is time to glue up the leg blanks. I didn't have any walnut thick enough to cut the legs out of so I will be laminating two and three piece blanks to make up the legs. Plenty of glue and plenty of clamps will help make these legs look like they came out of one solid piece of lumber. Once the glue dries I take them out of the clamps and start to clean them up on the jointer. Just as when I am preparing rough lumber, I will get one side flat and then make it square to an adjacent side. After jointing, it is straight to the planer, and I will plane these legs square to the maximum thickness I can get out of them, which happens to be one and one quarter inches. This is a little thinner than the 1.5 inches that I had designed, but I will be able to adjust the design to accommodate. After planing, I trim all the legs to their final length, and I move on to the tapering process. Setting up the taper jig is a bit fiddly, 
but with some patience and a little luck I am able to get it set in the correct position. The X's on the leg denote the off-cut side of the taper so I can cut around many of the knots and other flaws in the wood. Alright, if you thought that last cut was sketchy, just wait till you get a load of this jig right here. So this is my taper jig. I think this is the first time I've used it on my new saw, so that'll be interesting. I'll figure out a way to guide this without getting my hands close to the blade, but um, yeah, basically it's just a real simple, it's a hinge on the end of two pieces of wood and a little adjuster knob that I can lock down on this, you know, this guide here. And then there's a lot of trial and error trying to get it to uh, do exactly what I want it to do. And once I get it dialed in, I'll be able to knock out the tapers on all four of these legs. So, uh, cross your fingers, try not to cringe too much, and let's make these taper cuts. Well, that was a failure of the jig itself. This is the uh, stop block that I use, and I didn't use long enough screws. And so they ended up pulling out. So, uh, luckily, I had most of the safety precautions in place. I did get hit when this kicked back, but it wasn't bad. Really, the worst thing that happened is there was some damage to the end of the wood. Luckily that's going to be on the inside of the body so I might be able to get away with it. I might have been able to save it but I wasn't I didn't want to reach my hand in there. The last thing you want to do in one of those situations is like try to react really quickly because that's when you can get end up getting your finger stuck in the blade. So Nice little learning experience for me. I'm going to get a couple of really long deck screws and secure this really well. The reason I don't glue it on is because I make this piece to be replaceable. So, um, because it does end up getting cut up. So, we'll get back at it. In addition to that fiasco, the friction from wedging the wood between the blade and the fence created a small, smoldering fire inside my saw, so I had to take care of that before I could proceed. After a change of pants and a small pep talk in the mirror, I got back to the saw and finished up the taper cuts. These legs are tapered on two sides, so I could cut one side, then rotate the piece 90 degrees and cut the second side. After tapering, I took the legs to the router table to add a small eighth inch roundover on all the edges. I also rounded over the tips of the legs. This should help keep the ends of the legs from splintering if you need to scoot it from one place to another in your room. Okay, this remaining wood is gonna make up the body of the desk and the drawer fronts. So I need to get them all to a uniform width, which is going to be just under four inches. And that really is just determined about, and really that's just determined by the narrowness of this board right here. Everything else I could get a good five or so inches out of, but it's okay. Four inches will be fine. All the pieces are cut to final length using the crosscut sled. In my original plan, I was going to join the legs to the apron using dovetails. But since Christmas was approaching quickly, I was a little pressed for time, so I decided to go with pocket holes. 
I've had great success in the past with pocket holes and have no reason to believe they won't do a good job in this application as well. I use a piece of plywood to help me offset the aprons as I attach them to the legs. I start by making both sides of the desk as seen here. Then I attach the sides to the rear apron using the same piece of plywood to ensure a consistent offset. I cut a piece of plywood to serve as a front brace as I do not plan on having a front apron on this desk. The drawer fronts will take up the whole space between the front legs, leaving no room for an apron. Even pocket holes aren't foolproof all the time, especially when working with really dry, hard wood. A center drawer slide support is added to the rear apron and front brace, and with that, the body of the desk is complete. Like everything else, the piece is sanded off camera and cleaned with turpentine, and then set aside for finishing. Now onto the drawers. I cut the sides of the drawers out of some 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. I added dado to the lower edge of each strip to accept a quarter inch Baltic birch drawer bottle. I do a quick dry assembly so I can measure exactly how big that drawer bottom should be. I decide it would be easier to sand the individual pieces before assembly. The drawers are assembled using simple butt joints with glue and nails. This should be plenty strong for the type of use these drawers will see. Okay, so I did a little off-camera finish up work on these drawers. I just rounded over the top edges where hands may come into contact with the drawer and I sanded the outside and then I started laying out where my drawer slides are going to go also on the inside of the body here With the drawer boxes installed in the desk, it's time to work on the drawer fronts. I had a mix up when I was cutting the pocket holes for the apron, and I mistook the drawer fronts for the apron sides, so a little repair work was needed before I could proceed. I used my crosscut slug to trim the drawer fronts to their final length. The drawer fronts will be installed once I have completed the finish work on the desk. As you can see, I've already done most of the finishing on this project. I spared you the agony of watching me do it. Basically what it boiled down to is I take satin polyurethane from Minwax and I, I usually mix it down to like a 50-50 mixture with polyurethane and mineral spirits to make a wiping polyurethane. I put two coats on and then I sand it after it's completely dried. I use one of these 3M gray 3M pads and I, I scuff it down really good, get it nice and smooth, and then I put one final coat on. And a lot of times for that final coat, I might add just a little bit more polyurethane to the mix to make it just a little bit thicker on that final coat. And you end up with a pretty decent finish. 
I've also done the carcass and the legs and um, it turned out really nice. So all that's left is the drawer fronts. I'm actually going to pull the drawers out and put a couple of coats on the drawers as well just to protect them. And then uh, this thing will be ready to get fully put back together. I use my biscuit joiner to cut slots into the desk body in order to accept these Z-clips. The clips will fasten the top to the body, but still allow some seasonal wood movement without damaging anything. One of the clips interfered with the sliding action of the drawer. To fix it, I ran a small chamfer down the edge of the drawer side to give it enough clearance to work with the Z-clip in place. The finishing touch for this desktop is to use some Quad Zero steel wool and furniture wax to buff out the surface and give it that perfect semi-gloss sheen. I attach the drawer fronts by first setting them in place with some CA glue to hold them down temporarily. This gives me time to get the spacing perfect. I then use a simple jig to locate the holes for the drawer pulls. Space inside the drawer is a little tight. Luckily I have this right angle adapter for my drill and I was able to drill the countersinks for the drawer pull screws. A little more wax and steel wool for the rest of the desk and here is the finished product.